Let's go to Roto World I can see headlines. Men at work songs. Yeah, you like Men at Work? Who doesn't like Men at Work? It's like quintessentially Australian. Of course, we come worse. from the land down under. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. A little, they literally <laughs> sing that song. We come from the land down under. <laughs> yeah, it is. And a, Australia is the land down under. It's a good one. It's yeah. not the worst song to be attached to. Now, Matthew Stafford was the big news yesterday. Yeah, let's, let's hear from Sean World McVay yeah. talking about Matthew Stafford's elbow, uh, his concussion as well as his elbow as well we'll talk about. then we'll yeah. keep matthew stafford out we'll put him in the concussion protocol um what ended up happening was you know reggie and his group doing their kind of cleanup after the game you know you, you ask the questions and you do the right follow-ups and uh determined that they felt like that was the best thing for him and um that's kind of where we're at with it it's uh more importantly about you know the person than the player and these types of things as we know and Nobody's more of a competitor and wanting to be out there with his teammates than Matthew. He's in the protocol, so we'll take it a day at a time with him. And um, that was what uh, our medical experts determined just based on some of the things that they gathered was uh, the smart and the right course of action. I've gotten uh, confirmation that it is, in fact, it is, in fact, plume. It is a plume. Okay. It is, in fact, plume. I thought you were saying flume. No, 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 plume. Okay. plume. Did I say flume? I plume said is plume. the Australian. Yeah. I said flume. Yeah. Plume. Okay, it's, it's a peacock's plume. That, P-L-U-M-E. Plume is the correct uh, pronunciation there. Well, More importantly... Matthew Stafford's plume is in a bit of doubt for sure. our Sunday. As soon as that broke, the line dropped from Rams minus three against the Cardinals to Rams minus one and a half. And that also, because we're going to get to another headline around Kyler Murray, would have sure, gone sure. even further. But I was just going to say, I was like, really? Matthew Stafford's only worth two and a half points? Wow. And to the line? I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know what, right? Play? And listen, I think, I think Vegas might be right on this. To your point, like, we want to cover because it's a big story and it's a big name. But fantasy-wise, it's been completely does it, irrelevant. Does it matter? Yeah. This is a guy who, on the season so far this year, is QB 26 in fantasy points per game. He's had one game, count him one game with multiple touchdown passes. He's had under 11 fantasy points in five of his last six. And so you hopefully haven't been starting Matthew Stafford for a while and weren't planning on doing so this week. He's my QB 23 in week number 10. And a, a week in which, by the way, Burrow and Lamar Jackson are out. But chances are you weren't starting Mac Jones or Zach Wilson. So really only two starting caliber quarterbacks are out unless the guy he's facing, Kyler Murray, misses this game. NFL Network announcing yesterday, reporting yesterday, that he's day-to-day with a hamstring injury. Can you really be day-to-day with a hamstring injury? <laughs> well, particularly for a quarterback like Kyler Murray, where his, so much of his real-life value and his fantasy value comes from being able to you know, right. run with his hamstrings. Yes. If they're a little uh, tight or a little yeah, strained, yeah, yeah. No, he's no, in no. big you trouble. You see me like slowly meandering <laughs> through the halls because I have no hamstrings. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. I would them. be a speed demon, but yeah. I... I ate them away in a in a buttery in a in a you know a buttery One of feast. The, uh, the best defensive performances from any player last season was Aaron Donald in prime time against the Cardinals. He devoured Kyler Murray. I think he had three sacks. He had like 16 pressures. Absolutely ridiculous. And Kyler Murray would want the full use of his hamstrings to be able to elude Aaron Donald. But let's so, go back to Stafford for a yeah, second because th- thank you. I think that. Like, this is obviously a concern with the concussion. I jumped the gun on the elbow comment because I have heard that his elbow is still a thing in LA, and that's a problem for the rest of the season that they're just managing. And so, I mean, this is Cooper Cup is basically the quarterback of that offense at this point, but I, I don't feel good about Stafford this week, even if he plays and going forward if he doesn't. Yeah, I, mean, I think so. For me, the, the concern here is not necessarily Stafford to your point, but does it, you know, does it affect? My little Cooper Cup. Does it affect um, my little Cooper Cup? <laughs> um, I don't, I don't about, think Alan Robinson, 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 Robinson Ben Jefferson, Jefferson yeah. of the running game. Of, uh, Tyler Higby, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And my little Cooper Cup. And your little Cooper Cup. Look, you start your tight ends against Arizona. I'm not really worried about it. Look, Wofford has one career start. He I came don't in, mind Wofford. Yeah. I don't mind him. He that's, looked that's, good when he's look, been out there. I don't think John Wofford is that much of a downgrade from current Matthew Stafford at the moment. Like, again, he had one career start. It was week 17 of the 2020 season, and it actually came against the Arizona Cardinals, a game in which he won, and the Rams did, 18-7. to He went 22-38, of 38, 231 yards, no touchdown, but six carries for 56 yards, probably more mobile than you might think he is. He's somebody that's also performed well in the preseason. I, I – 
you're probably not starting them unless you're you're in a truly deep, you know, super flex league, two quarterback league, and you're desperate. But there's a little bit of upside with a rushing here, and you're still start. I don't know that there's a decision to make, and the, the, the only Rams that you would be considering starting, I think, my little Cooper Cup and Tyler Higby, and I think you're starting both of them. Yep. It's We're worth noting that, by the way, Cup has struggled against Arizona, right? Three of the last four games, he's had under 65 yards against Car- against the Cardinals. And if Matthew Stafford isn't there, you're downgrading him a little bit. But whatever. Yeah. You ain't benching Cooper Cup. No, and it's still Cooper Cup. And one of those games it was in the playoffs where they were destroying the Cardinals, so he didn't really have to get involved. And then also one of those games, from memory, was really early in last season before he kind of became Cooper, Cooper Cup, Cup, like Jerry Rice Cooper right. Cup. Right, he was just my little Cooper Cup. Yes. He wasn't everyone's little Yes, then he little became Cooper enlarged Cup. Cooper Cup. Yeah, everyone's yeah. Cooper Cup. Right. Yeah, it was like Ant-Man. Like, he yeah. just grew to be giant and yes. amazing. Really took over. Okay, let's jump to Trail on Burks in Tennessee. But first, let's hear... Why do you hear... think there's no Australian superheroes? Huh? <laughs> What's the question? I'm just, I'm just, I was just, I mentioned Ant-Man, Ant-Man, you know, because Ant-Man's part of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, just like I am. I can, you know, I, I, I mean, I refer to him as Ant, you know, because I'm, I'm in the universe here. But I'm just, I'm just, I was just thinking about this. Like, you know, the MCU tries to represent, like, you know, all races, creeds, kinds. <laughs> yes. And I don't think there's an Australian superhero. Why about, do you think that is? You don't know about Captain Boomerang? You don't know about, I don't know uh, about Prince, Captain... Prince Kangaroo? No. <laughs> you know who our superheroes are? No. They're all American superheroes. It's no. like Spider-Man and Batman. That's right. Just, uh, inflicted Something upon to Australia. think about that. Yeah. I mean, the closest thing to an Australian Cultural superhero hegemony. is Crocodile Dundee. Oh, he wasn't. He definitely wasn't. He's not an Australian superhero. Yeah, I mean, like, um, uh, the guy who directed... Um, you know, uh, Waikiki. Uh, what's what? What's what? I'm, you I'm, lost I'm, me. I'm, no, no. He, he's he's Australian. He he per, he he directed all the Guardians of the Galaxies. No, you've lost uh, me. Um, oh no, that's James Gunn. No, that no. He directed the Thor. Um, oh God, what's his name? Waikiki. What, <laughs> Waikiki. I, I, no. done. I can't help you. Well, I don't know. Someone's <laughs> talking in my ear, but you're talking. I can't hear. It. Yeah, all right, it doesn't matter. Well, anyway, whatever. Only trail on Burks can say. The fact is, is you actually have. On Australian, uh, Taiki Waikita. How do I pronounce it, guys? Nothing. Haiki Waikit. What? <laughs> Hang on. Taika Waititi. I don't know who that is. Okay. I'm, am I a bad Australian? Yeah, I know. Yeah, we, <laughs> probably, because he's a very successful director. He's won an Oscar. Um, yeah, he's and he's the uh, he's the voice of a character in the MCU as well. And he, okay. uh, anyway, I'll so, have a refresher during the break. Until then, help us out, Traylon Burks, he, I, and tell us what it's like on your return to practice. All right, yeah, here's Traylon Burks. Be back in the locker room with my teammates. Um, see the coaches, the staff. It's a good feeling. What's so the last uh, couple? Of, what's the last month I've been like to kind of get to this day? Um, hard work, uh, dedication, just uh, putting my mind to the ground and just get back and be out here for the team. How you feel? I feel great. You think you got a chance to? Do you, you think you got a chance to maybe get back out there and contribute uh, maybe Sunday against the Broncos? Um, you know that's the plan. We're just gonna see how this week goes and you know work hard and you know, let God take care of the rest. Coach Ray, when I mentioned conditioning and said you work hard from that perspective, what are some of the things? you did to make sure you stay in shape? Um, honestly, just going out and running when I was able to run, um, making sure that I was breathing, everything was up to par, and uh, just being me. Do you have any pain? Like, Do you feel like the injury is, is behind you, and now it's just a matter of getting yourself back in football shape? Um, I would just say just, you know, we'll see how this week goes, and, you know, we'll decide from there. That, that that was long, but on the plus side, we couldn't really hear it. Um, <laughs> I believe that was Trey Burke saying that it, he's the plan is for him to play this week. It's unclear. Right. right. Might have been traded. But, don't uh, know. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, it was it was Titans wide receiver, rookie wide receiver Trey Burke saying he's going to play this week. But it, it was long and hard to hear. <laughs> it was. Which is like when you're thinking both visually and audio wise <laughs> for a show, that's what you're looking for. Yes. Um, lo- long and hard to understand. Um, I, look, I, I think it's kind of interesting just because no one has stepped up in that Tennessee offense. And I no. think he's probably worth, you know, if he was dropped in your league by somebody he could have been. I don't mind grabbing him and stashing him. They're playing Denver this week. And, and so that's, that's the number one pass defense over the last month. Um, oh, you know, we would expect – would expect Patrick Sertan to have some shadow coverage here. I mean, he's the only guy that really gives you any sort of... Can he shadow Derrick Henry? Yeah, <laughs> right? that's I all mean, that matters. Exactly. We don't know if it's going to be Ryan Tannehill or Malik Willis under center. Um, I think if it's Malik Willis, it definitely doesn't matter. Yep. Like, you know, he just um, his passing game is still a, a work in progress. Tannehill hasn't been great either this year. I, I'm just... 
I think Burks is an interesting upside play to grab and stash, but I'm not starting him uh, this week. You know, the total in this game is 36 and a half. <laughs> it's it unbelievable. It opened at 39, so it's yeah, already it's been going, already down. going down. I think that's the thought is that... And by the way, I might still take might the still under. Might still take the under, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm probably this avoiding game. this game, but if I had to bet it, I think I'd still take the under. I mean, like two... Two good defenses and two bad offenses. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I kind of like the Broncos plus two and a half there. Just in a low-scoring game, entire Titans defense is banged up. Yeah. Who knows, Willis or Tannehill. All right, let's go to one of our favorite subjects, which is Elijah Moore, sure. who apparently is going to be playing in the slot going forward, according to coach Robert Salad. Does this change anything for you on Elijah Moore? On Elijah Moore, it does not. Okay. I, the fact of the matter is, is that small sample size, right? But Elijah Moore last year, he didn't play entirely in the slot, right? This is last year, 29% of his routes came uh, and 34% of his targets from the slot. So still like, you know, basically two thirds of his routes and snaps came, and targets came outside the numbers. Remember last year, of course, Zach Wilson was in and out of the lineup. You know, there was the Mike White games and Joe Flacco. And so he played with multiple quarterbacks without the weapons. Um, you know, he was they moved him all over the field. And, and so I think there's nothing you can really take from last year to say like, oh, yeah, this is going to be awesome for Elijah Moore. Certainly the numbers so far suggest that it's not going to be anything amazing for him. Right. So far this year, 28 percent of his routes have come from the slot, only 10 percent of his targets. Is that because he's not getting open? Is that because just Zach Wilson doesn't look like, you know, isn't looking for him? Did, did Elijah Moore's mom turn Zach Wilson down? <laughs> What's go. going there on? Go. Is there wow. something like, you know what, by the way. The minus I'm 1,000 prop cash. Can I tell you what? Well, can I tell you something? I'm just going to make, I'm real quickly here. Rob Gronkowski on, on, uh, on Fox this past weekend made a Zach Wilson mom joke. Yeah, so then it's right? free. Right, and then it, like, it went viral and like people, oh, Gronk. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've been making freaking Zach Wilson mom jokes for like a month and a half now straight, like pounding into the ground. Like, can I get any love? No. Yeah, how many I was like, how, I, can't, I can't believe Gronk made a joke about <laughs> national TV about Zach Wilson's mom. I've been like, are you kidding me? Like, many, I've, got a, I've got a tight 12-minute set of Zach Wilson mom jokes yeah. at this point. How many Super Bowl, Super Bowl rings do you have? Less than Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, how many passes from Tom Brady? Yeah. Also zero. <laughs> yeah, there you Also go. zero. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah. There's yeah. A, Gronk and I are both members of the human race. That's pretty much all we have in common. It's true. Um, and your affinity he, for Zach Wilson he's mom built, jokes. He's built. I'm not. Um, he's tall and successful. <laughs> I'm not, you know, there's just, there's a lot going on for Gronk that just, it's a Gronk world. We just live in it. Um, I just merely wanted to point out that, you know, some of us out here have been doing the, the Lord's work in terms yes. of Zach Wilson mom's yes. joke been grinding for quite away. some time. Yes, been yeah. grinding away right. for the cause. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been like, exactly. I've been in the Zach Wilson mom minds, you know, freaking hammering coal out there, you know, left it's and right. It's insane you know, visual. Right, visual. exactly. And then Gronk just throws off one like PTA joke. Like he just sort of hints at it. I know. Like I've gone right at yeah, it. He had the kid gloves on. Yeah, You're exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. I'm like, I'm, you know, right, right. Like, you know, I'm, I'm elbows deep into it. You know, understand right. what I'm talking about? On that comment, we absolutely have to move on to running back. Love All right. Hayes. No, 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 no. Hang on. Hang on. We got to actually talk about Elijah Moore. My point is, is that about Elijah Moore is that, um, that we don't have enough of it. There, it's all small sample size and it's all skewed. But I would say that the data we do have doesn't suggest that this is suddenly going to be awesome for Elijah Moore. I, I'm not picking him up. I'm not suddenly like, oh, whoo, it's Elijah Moore's back. Like the guy can't sniff a target these days. And then the other concern here is that the, is about Garrett Wilson because now if Elijah Moore is going to play in the slot, that means Garrett Wilson, who has uh, had 48 percent of his routes and over 40 percent of his targets come from the slot this year. Garrett Wilson moves to the outside. So now Garrett Wilson's talented enough that he can beat coverage wherever he is. And he's still going to be the focal point of that passing offense, but this isn't great for Garrett Wilson's fantasy value. And he's what we care about in the jets jets passing attack, by the way, again, for whatever it's worth, and you can say maybe it's the competition, what have you, but Zach Wilson has actually been much better throwing to the perimeter this year than he has been going to the slot in terms of completion rate, in terms of passing rating. Like the numbers are much better for Zach Wilson throwing outside the numbers than inside the numbers. So I, this makes me a little bit nervous for Garrett Wilson. That's the takeaway from the Elijah Moore news. Okay. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, respectfully, 
respectfully, okay? Respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.